Okay. So we are on the sheet called um, Practice Test 3, same one we were working on last time, and we are ready for problem number 3, which says state the domain, range, and asymptotes of these two. So basically, we need to know what they look like. We need to know what the pictures look like. So, dig back into that memory bank. What does the BFFs, all those BFFs, what does the logarithmic function look like? It is the one that has an asymptote here and goes through the point one zero. This is your logarithmic curve. Remember that? Now, what have we done to this? Allie? Moved it to the right, two. Remember when it took the X? So now we have, I'll just redraw it. Now we have an asymptote not in zero, but an asymptote at X equals two. And a dot or a zero in X equals X. So this is a picture of that. Would everybody agree? Now, what do we need to know? We need to know domain, range, and asymptotes. Okay, so domain is x. Tell me about the x's in this picture. They're bigger than two. So domain is going to be two to infinity. Now, don't include the two. Don't use a bracket because isn't there an asymptote there? So that's like not included. Now, what about range? Range is up and down. What? Exactly. Your range. Is negative infinity positive infinity, in other words, all real numbers. Don't we go up and down? The whole shebang. And then asymptotes. Well, that's clear. Your asymptote is at x equals 2. You really don't stand a chance on that problem if you don't remember what your BFF is, all right? So you need to remember what the logarithmic curve is. That's this. And make the changes. Now, this is the same thing. You don't stand a chance here unless you remember what your exponential looks like. Your exponential has an asymptote at zero, an intercept, a y-intercept at one, and goes like this. That's your BFF, your flashcard, it's your straight um, Exponential. Now, what have we done to this one? Moved it down four. So instead of the asymptote being at zero, it's now going to be down here at negative four. And that will now be at negative three. And then our picture looks like that. Does everybody agree? Domain. Domain. All real, all real numbers. Negative infinity to infinity. Domain is x. Aren't we going left and right the whole time? Nothing to stop us. What about range? Negative 4 up. So your range is negative 4 to infinity. And your asymptote is clearly at y equals negative 4. Everybody okay with that? Write this equation. 
So that's question B, growth or decay, that's going to be a decay. When you raise 3 to the x, you grow. Multiplying by 3 grows. Multiplying by 1 third shrinks, decays. Sketch by plotting some points. Well, I sketch based on my knowledge and my BFFs. Um, what's this point right here? Zero one. Zero one. Um, if I let x be one, this would be the point one one third. If I let x be one, if I let x be negative one, I get three. I don't have a very good picture here, but negative one would flip this and give me three. So there's some points plotted. I don't have to plot points if I remember my shape. Uh, the little stars next to this mean uh, calculator. So we'll go ahead and just do them as we come to them, but on your test they'll be separated. Log base 7 19. A couple different ways to do this. Who's got an idea? Anybody? Yeah, Robbie? You're on fire. Don't you go to like the uh, map and you slow down the log and you change the base? You can, but not everybody can do that. So we can not everybody has a new calculator like that. So we need to know how to do this mathematically. How do we do this mathematically, Lauren? So one option is to set it equal to x. That's what you're trying to do is figure out what it equals, right? So then what? Loop the loop. So 7 to the x equals 19. Anytime I have log equals a number, I'm going to loop the loop. That's the loop the loop situation. Log equals number. Uh oh. Now I'm going to log both sides. Sometimes when we have a problem like this, we had 7 to the x equals 19. If we had 7 to the x equals 49, that would be easy. But since I can't do that here, I'm going to log both sides. And when I do that, this comes out in front, because that's where exponents go in logarithm land. Exponents get pulled down here. So x equals the log of 19 over the log of 7. Is that okay with everybody dividing both sides? All right, let's just make sure log 19 divided by log 7. I hate to count things wrong just because you can't type it in. 1.5131.
0.018 compounded monthly, n is 12, and t is my unknown. Okay, now, it really isn't a big deal to get these three in one, but step one is to divide by this number. That's step one. So, divide by one is easy, I'll just erase it. Now what? You have to log both sides because, again, it's just like we had here. Our variable is the exponent. When your variable is the exponent, the only way to get it down and make it solvable is to use logarithms. So now the exponent comes down on the level with the rest of the problem. And I can get my answer, which is right here. By dividing by 12 and dividing by this. Would everybody agree with that? I need to divide by 12 and this to get T by itself. So log 3, close parentheses, divide by 12 equals this thing, and then divide that by log 1 plus 0.018 divided by 12. Ooh, did you get 61.08 years? Anybody else get that? Perfect. Rhythms to solve this problem? No, please don't. Don't. You could, but oh my gosh, it gets just terrible. The only time we need logarithms is when our unknown is the exponent. It is not. How are we going to start the problem? Divide. So 2, 3, 4, 5 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4 equal 1 plus r over 4 to the 40th. closer to solving if you do that. You're just more kind of rewriting. Think about this, kids. How did you solve an equation that looked like this? A equals R squared. What did you do with that? You square rooted it. So to get rid of this so that you could solve for R, you square rooted it. Well, I am not going to square root both sides. I am going to 40th root both sides. Because 40th rooting is the only way to get rid of that 40, so that now I can do the math to get my R. Are you following here? So now I have to take the 40th root of this big fraction, which luckily I have a calculator that will do that. Have we done this before? I can't remember. So type in 40 
always start typing that number first. Whatever route you're taking, type that in. So type in 40. Go to your math button where my finger's pointing. It says math. And the fifth option down, at least when he hits the fifth one down, is X root. So press that button and then type in your fraction uh, in parentheses, two, three, four, five, divided by one, two, three, four. Did you get like 1.016? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now that isn't your answer. That's what this is. So we're solving for R. So you're going to take this answer and what are you going to have to do? Subtract the one and then multiply by four. So I got about 6.47%. I actually got 0 0.0647, but since it said interest rate, I went ahead and made that a percent because that's what interest rates are. Would you agree? All right, so keep keeping that in mind. You never know when something like that might pop up. Who knows? All right, number eight. What is the rate of growth for a strain of bacteria that goes from 789 to 4321 um, in 11 hours? All right, which formula? Perk, it's not money. It's not money. It'll be perk. So what am I ending with? 4321. Starting with 789. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, step one. Right. Look where my variable is. My variable is an exponent. That means I'm going to need logarithms since the problem has an E in it, it would be easier, not, not totally necessary, but easier to use natural logarithms because an LN and an E in direct contact with each other will disappear, cancel out. This saves me a button on my calculator. LN. 0.12. So this is like the given information. This is what I'm starting with. And somehow, based on that, I'm supposed to figure out what this equals. All right. So any idea how this might be rewritten? Eli? You're on the right track, but no, it's not 7x to the negative 2. Negatives mean 1 over. What do radicals mean, Dan? One half. To the 1 half. So yes, that's exactly the way I want to start. Radicals do not play nicely in logarithm land, so when you have the opportunity, change it into an exponent. So 7x to the 1 half. Now, this is a logarithm. What happens to that one half? It comes out in front. 
we've been doing it all day. They come out in front. So one half log seven x. Now, these are being multiplied. So I can actually separate them into separate pieces by doing what? How do I pull this apart? It's going to be a log of x, or log base x of 7, and a log base x of x. I can make this two separate logarithms. What will be the sign in between them? Plus. Because when logs are added, they go together as a multiplication. And when they're when you take the logarithm of a product, you can pull it apart into an addition. And then a still, I still have the one half out in front. So the key to doing this problem is to take apart whatever this is. Whatever that is, take it apart as far as you can. Then, look at what you've got. Don't we have a value for this? They gave me a value for that. It's 0.123. What about this? You know that too. What's the log base x of x? One. It's one. That is one. Let's review. The log base four of four squared is two. Sincere has it. He took it. I know. I'm sorry. He just walked off with it. The log base four of four squared is two. Remember that property? So the log base four of four to the first would be one. So the log base x of x to the first is one. One. They're not going to tell you that. You need to know that. That's one. So one half times 1.123. I don't know what that is, but that's the answer to the question. Point five six one five. All right, once we're done with the sheet, we can do another one like that. This is for what's this for? To throw you off. <laughs> right? It's not needed in this problem. Now, when could that be needed? Well, what if instead of being that, what if this had been 14x? break it up into 2 times 7 times x, and then I would need the 2, see? But I don't need it in this particular problem. Alright, there's a couple more to do, then we can find another one like that if you wish, or whatever. I don't know. Alright. So, where am I ready for? Number 10. Consider this. A two or three. A function that gives the number of ants present in a colony at time t hours. What is the maximum population of ants? 600. Bingo. This is a logistic function. Look at the way it looks. Look at the style of it. That's logistic. And the numerator is your limit to growth. That's your maximum population. How many ants are present initially? You can't tell that from the equation. You have to do some math. What does present initially mean? Time zero. Time zero. That's the starting point, right? Time zero. So we're going to plug the zero in so we get. 600 over 1 plus e squared, basically. So on my calculator, 600 divided by parentheses 1 plus second ln 2. I hope you got about 72. Where I 
at me. Everybody should be typing that in to make sure you can do it. Did you get 71.5 something? Okay. These are ants, so we're not going to say 25. We're going to say, okay, that's about 72. How many ants are present after three hours? Won't we do the same thing except plug in three? So the big thing there is initially means time zero. X is zero, T is zero. Uh, this is going to be 600 over one plus E to the negative first if I put in three. If you're in the same way. 600 divided by parentheses 1 plus 7 ln negative 1. I got about 439. And then finally, when will there be 507? e to the 2 minus t equals 93. And then divide by 507. So e to the 2 minus t equals 93 over 507. this out, so 2 minus T equals LN 93 over 507. Now we got to get T by itself, right? So I don't care how you do that. Whatever flips your switch. Personally, I like just to move the T over here and move the LN thing over here. You don't have to do that. Do it however you want, but let's make sure we get the matching answer, okay? This is not right. I got 3.69 or about 3.7. is entering in here. Making payments on credit cards is not good. It's a rip off. What will your monthly payment be? Now what does that whole idea of payment signal to me? It is not going to be these. It is going to be an FV or a PV. So I have these on one of these sheets. I'll put it up here on the board for you. But tell me which one I want. PV, because I am paying off my credit card bill. I'm paying off the bill. So here's my formula. 
You do not have to memorize this at all, people. At all. That's my formula. Okay? So now I need to get my problem. Where, where, where do I put the $1,234? That's the present value of the loan. That's what I owe. One, two, three, four. My payment is the R, and that's what I'm gonna look for. That's my variable. One minus one plus. All right, now what's my interest rate? 0.1899 divided by 12, because I'm splitting it up into monthly payments, right? N in this problem, remember, stands for the total number of payments I'm going to make. So I'm making monthly payments for three years. So my N is negative 36, or my N is 36, so it's negative 36 there. Monthly payments, three years. And then I'll divide by 0.18. is you type in the numerator exactly the way I wrote it the numerator it equals and then divided by this in parentheses <coughs> What will your monthly payment be? Forty-five twenty-three. Yep. Yeah. You put in the numerator. Do you put the negative thirty-six in there? Put the numerator. Yeah. Raise it to the negative thirty-six. So pressing buttons, it's going to be that little guy right there, that little carrot thing. So yeah, yeah. one minus parentheses, one plus that divided by that, close the parentheses, raised to the negative 36 equals, and then divided by, all right, question B, what is the total amount that this is going to cost you? Well, you're going to pay $45.23 a month for 36 months. So it's going to cost you $1,628.28. So that's what you're going to end up paying. Eli, you feeling okay? Okay, we'll sit up. Open up your eyes. Um, that's what you're going to end up paying. That's the total that you're going to pay. Uh, take a look at that and say, oh, well, you know, that's only an extra 400 bucks. Well, there's only 1200 to start with, so that's like 33% extra. Yep, yep, because that's what you're going to pay, right? Every month, you're going to pay 45 23 Okay, so this thing was called practice test. Probably pretty close to the real thing. However, we have practice test two also in our packet. 
And we have final test practice in our packet. So I don't care. Find a problem somewhere. What kind of problem do we need to practice um, to get ready for this thing? We're going to review again tomorrow, too, so a little bit more time. Let's get as much done today as we can. What do we need to practice? Yes, there are So what we just did, remember which one? Three. Three, so, so basically like a picture type yeah. thing? Yeah, yeah, three and four. Okay, so I don't, let me see if I have one here. Candy, otherwise I'll just make one up. The interchange. Um, okay, well here's one. It says sketch y equals one half to the x. Give its domain, range, asymptotes, and is it both to the k? This is all one question.
Okay, so she wants to write the equation of a logistic function <coughs> with an initial value of three-fifths. Okay, so this is going to be logistic. We have an initial value of three-fifths. We have a limit to growth of three, and it contains the point negative two, three-tenths. We did this um, the la last time we did this. This is one of the ones we did the last time. So it's logistic. So what's probably the first thing you ought to write down? What's it look like? What's it look like? What are we shooting for? Y equals what if it's logistic? No, 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 no. A times B to the X is what is that? That's exponential. Now, you're going to have to do that on your test also, kids. You're going to have to do that one on your test. If you're going to have to write an exponential. That's what that is. Is it, what? The, is it the A over 1 uh -huh. plus B to the X? I mean, B to the X. Yep, that's the goal. Okay, so highlight that. If you've forgotten that, you're going to have to do this. So you need to know that. So you need to know both of these. That's your exponential. This is your logistic. And that A is very different than this A. So please don't think they're the same thing. They are not. They're very different. Okay. Here's the given information. Limit to growth, initial value containing that point. In a, a logistic, in a logistic, which of these numbers, A, B, and C, do we know directly from the given? Lauren? A. A is? Three. three. The numerator, remember we just talked about it with our ant problem. The numerator is the limit to growth. It is the top asymptote in your logistic function. Okay, so that's done. We also talked about in the ant problem, what's the initial value? Where does that come from? Plug in zero for, in my case, x, t in a normal problem time, time zero. So I know that if I put in zero for x, I am going to get three fifths. The initial value is the value of the function when x is zero. All right, how do you want to solve that? Cross multiply. So, oh, wait a second, wait a second. What's c to the zero? Oh, one. So I have 3 fifths equals 3 over 1 plus d. So 3 plus 3d equals 15 if I cross multiply. And 3d equals 12, so b is 4. So y equals 3 over 1 plus 4 c to the x. That's where I am now because I know a is 3. And I just figured out B was four. So now what? Right? Plug in the other point. So I take this other random point with no significance, it's just there. So three tenths equals three over one plus four C to the negative second. Here. So 3 plus 12c to the negative second equals 30. Subtract 3. Uh, 
uh, gets 27 over 12 reduce. So C to the negative second equals 9 fourths. Now if you're at all worried about this, what does C to the negative second mean? 1 over C squared, right? So let's cross multiply one more time. So 4 equals 9 C squared. 4 nines equals C squared. So my C is patience, patience, patience. We're going through it. There's a lot, but it's all doable. Initial value means X is zero. And all kind, every problem, every problem, including exponential, the initial value is when X is zero. Okay, Amanda, one time for one more. Can you do, um... Just show me. Okay. What it is. This one. Yep. So she wants to do uh, just a simplifying an exponent situation. So something like um, 64 to the negative 4 thirds, something like that. Actually, let me make it two thirds. Something like this. Just simplify this. No calculator. So, probably the first thing we should take care of is that. So, we had it a couple times, including what I just did right there. If the exponent is negative, it's 1 over. some kind and in this case it would be a cube root because the denominator tells you the root and the numerator tells you the power so what's the cube root of 64 4 and we're squaring it so that is 16 would be the answer is negative 4. The cube root of the negative is a negative. You can cube root negatives. Can't square root them without lines. And by the way, the answer to this would still be 16 because you're squaring it in now. But yes, you can cube root a negative. Okay? Alright, so for tomorrow, here's what you need to do. You need to look through all that review stuff that I gave you. And you need to circle some problems that we will do together tomorrow. Tomorrow's our last review day.